Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice is an audio and a visual resource that you can find on multiple platforms. I'm on Odyssey, I'm on Listen Notes, and Podtail. Those are all podcasting sites. I also have Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. I have SoundCloud and Spotify. On social media, you can follow me on Telegram, you can follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, and Twitter. I have platforms for all those. And I also have backup and alternate channels where you can find some prophecies that I'm no longer able to host here. You can find those on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon. So if you're new, the best way to get value out of this channel is to use playlists. You have to go to the dashboard. To get to the dashboard, all you have to do is click the photo of the channel or click to click the name of the channel. It will take you to the dashboard and then you're going to see home, you're going to see videos, you're going to see playlists. Click the playlist and then a playlist is a themed lineup of a particular type of video. And the playlist that I highly recommend new people to go through is the Sin series. You'll find the Sin series also go through my repentance playlist. What is repentance? Make sure that you go through those playlists and have an understanding of what the Lord has been saying here for the last few years. The Master's Voice is a prophetic channel. So this is a place where the Lord Jesus Christ alive and well and still speaking to his church according to Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 is speaking to me celestial and he is telling me certain things. Mostly I get these in dreams, but sometimes I do see visions and sometimes the Lord will simply dictate a lot of text to me. And then I write that down and that is what you find in these videos. If you do not understand what prophecy is, if you are new to understanding how God is working, if you think that God does not speak simply because we are in the modern era and that has been done away with and you have a cessationist doctrine where you think that all the gifts of the church have ceased, I want to let you know that I'm not interested in any of that and that is something that you're going to have to work out on your own. Either you believe or you don't believe. Either you have discernment or you don't. Either you know how to test the spirits to see if they be of God, or you simply have your own viewpoint and you're going to stick to it. Whatever way you decide, that is up to you. It has absolutely no effect on me. God has told me to come and to speak the word of God, and that I will do. He told me to prepare a people that are fit to meet him. And when he says fit, automatically, I know that that means that there will be a multitude that are unfit. Either they will refuse to change, they will refuse to be shaped, by the message of this channel, but whatever that decision is, it has no effect on the work that I've been sent to do by God or the people who will lock into it and receive these messages as the word of God. I have a very sober prophecy here today. I received it just, I think maybe two days ago. I received it on September 17. It was a dream that came immediately after um, the dream that I had about the Caribbean, which I just made recently. That dream was on September 16, and the very next day, I received a dream about one particular country in Africa. One country in Africa was highlighted for everything that I'm going to explain here. But when I woke up and the Lord was coaching me through, calming me through, and talking to me about the things that will come, he highlighted that this is actually something that is going to be seen all over Africa. So what I'm about to discuss is an extremely tearing, difficult, and brutalizing topic. And I'm saying now that I know it will hurt many hearts because there are many people who have been victim of this already. Understand that the intention of God is not to tear at your old wounds, but God is trying to bring wisdom to the rest who do not have understanding, that they will not end up in the trap that once caught you. So even though I do not give trigger warnings on this channel for this one, I'm going to tell you that this is a difficult topic. It's a sobering topic. It involves men and it involves women, and God is looking at it from the aspect of duality, but the brunt of this prophecy, the warning in this prophecy, the caution in this prophecy is to women. So I had a very terrible dream. Uh, it was a series of terrible dreams, actually. And all I can say is I thank, I thank Yah for being my helper and my protector in this dream. I thank him 
that he was just using the dream to show me something and this something is going to become a reality and he was showing me what will be happening to women worldwide it will be happening everywhere and i have examples at the end of this prophecy the lord laid on my heart brought up several examples that i've actually come across in the last two to three years to know that this thing that I'm talking about is real, but this dream has a particular focus on the continent of Africa. So if you are an African, it does not matter if you are living in diaspora, if you're living in diaspora, but you have family members who live in Africa, if you are African, um, and you live in Africa, especially if you are female, you are the focus of this prophecy and it behooves you to listen with your whole heart to listen without opinions and especially if you are part of this modern female feminist push to set that Western poison and doctrine aside and listen with the truth and the understanding that your grandmother and your mother would have raised you with before you went astray and started watching people on American TV and believing everything that they say. This prophecy is grave. It is heavy. And if you are minded to listen, it can be a blessing to you. So this prophecy is to the whole of Africa, but particularly the nation of Nigeria. The dreams that I had, I had several dreams and all of them were of Nigeria. And in between, every time I woke up from the dream, as is his habit, the Lord spoke to me. Until now, I'm sitting here with a fully formed prophetic word, first and foremost to the men and the women of Nigeria, concerning the times and the spiritual realities that will come upon them and also come upon many nations in Africa. All who are minded to listen can listen. That is, a, This is an open and a free platform. I can't stop or police anyone from coming here, and I can't prevent anyone from listening. So all who are minded to listen can listen. But I'm telling you now, if you are stubborn-hearted, if you are the kind of person who you go against what Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 13 says, where it says that he who judges a matter before he hears it, the same is a fool and it is also a shame to him. God is talking about in the Bible where people cannot keep quiet and keep still long enough for the fullness of a matter to be presented to them so that they have all the facts. They don't have it in increments, bits and pieces where they keep talking talking, talking as the video is going, but you are actually listening and allowing your spirit to pull all the information so that you can sit down and think about it and ask yourself, why would God show her something like this? Why would God show her something like this? Why would he send her out to talk about us like this, to reveal this kind of thing about us and what is God's intention by sending this woman to us Nigerians, to us Africans to say these things. So you can listen, but I'm telling you now, if you're someone who is stubborn, if you're one of those who you always miss the point of what the Holy Spirit is saying because you listen to everything through this modern ear, because you've learned a lot of books and because you've gone to school and you have a lot of this and that credentials, if you're always listening with a modern, logical, well, I'll see if I like it or not, or if you have fallen prey to feminist arguments as many women around the world have, especially when it comes to certain things, then I can tell you right now that it will not be well with you. This prophecy will not benefit you and you will not be able to draw anything from it and you are running the risk of being one who will become an object lesson. God says that if there are any women who want to show that they are wiser than God, this is the impression he was laying on my heart. Even before I started the video, I'm going to give you a preview. And he simply said that there's greed in the hearts of women, celestial. There's great greed in the hearts of women and it will be their destruction. It will be their downfall. When you hear this prophecy and you still think that the finer things in life are yours by right, yours by default, all I can say is you will be on the news. It doesn't matter where that news is. It may be international news. It may be news in your country, but you will very likely be on the news against your will. Just a moment, please. So if there are any women who want to show that they are wiser than God, they will find, they will eventually find that it is not wise to kick against the goads. When you hear what will be happening and coming to many nations and you hear it in full and you hear it with full understanding 
then you as a woman will be tasked to decide whether you are going to end up being made an example of, whether you're going to end up being a guinea pig to defend feminism, or whether you're going to obey God, whether you're going to walk in your life with sense and wisdom in these last days. So the first dream I had is that I was in Nigeria and I was in a neighborhood. I'm just going to refer to my tablet to keep me on track with the dream, but I had it recently and I had to relive it as I was writing out the prophecy. So I pretty much remember everything. I was in Nigeria and I was walking in a neighborhood and it was just an ordinary neighborhood. So I want to specify that it was not a shopping center, okay? Shopping center is where you go to the shopping center, you go to the mall, they call it shopping centers, it's a mall here. And that particular area is built up for industrial use. So they will have entertainment centers, they may have a bowling alley, they may have a cinema complex, they may have so many stores, restaurants and everything like that. In areas of high industrial traffic, you're going to get a lot of people, families at all times of the day, couples at all times of the day, single people, groups of friends, business people popping in to have a lunch or just all kinds of things. There's a lot of foot traffic. And so industrial areas for retail and something like that, they are not sparsely populated because it's not a neighborhood. It's not a place where people are just living, you know, with a few stores nearby dotted to meet and tend to their needs. So I was not in a shopping strip. I was not anywhere that was densely populated. I was in a neighborhood, which means that people had these, you know, their tall walls, uh, their homes, they, they call it compounds. They had their tall walls up and there was just a road. And I was just walking in this neighborhood and I happened to see a store. I happened to see a store that was selling ladies clothing. So I was passing by places where you can buy food. I was passing by the occasional supermarket. I was passing by the occasional place um, where you can sit and just order food and eat it. They call it a chop bar, but I wasn't in an industrial place. And then I saw a store. I saw a store with such lovely clothing in the window. Let me tell you, this clothing was so well designed. It was their traditional clothing that they call native. But what they mean by that is not what we mean by native. They literally means mean it's their traditional clothing that they prefer to wear as opposed to what we wear here, which is called Western. And so the native clothing, it was exclusively ladies clothes in the window. And I tell you, it was so beautiful and eye catching that I immediately curved in there. I could hardly wait when I was entering the store. And because of the anticipation of seeing the pretty things in the window, the gowns and everything like that, I came in with a big smile on my face already. And I was greeted by three young men, I would say between the ages of 25 to about 31. They weren't any older than that. I was greeted by three young men who were very attentive in this store because there was nobody else in the store. Business was not exactly booming, but the store was so pretty. And it was not a very big store. When you walk in, right? When you walk in, immediately in front of you is a counter or the register area. So immediately in front of you is the register area. And then on both your left and your right side, on the left side is basically a, a little kind of area where they have racks and racks of clothing. The store was so crammed with clothing racks because I guess they had ordered so many things and they just wanted to make sure that they had variety. So they had every kind of conceivable um, cut and color gowns or skirts or blouses of their local clothing. And on the left side, it was just racks and then the wall of the store. And then in front, the register was there. And at the back was a shelf that was just crammed with ladies things, skin creams and body lotions and perfumes and all kinds of things, skin oils and things like that. Just the kind of things that we like. On the right side, the racks of clothing were not neatly arranged in lines because it seemed that there wasn't enough space. They were arranged in this zigzag pattern that made it kind of awkward to move between them. And then beyond that, on the right side was the changing room. And I'm giving you this information because it's useful. So as soon as I stepped in, one of the young men, the one who was behind the counter, he stood up and he greeted me so respectfully. He said, good afternoon, ma. How are you? What would you like to see? We have everything here. 
everything that you could like is here and if you don't see what you like you can just ask us anyhow or show us a style and we can quickly make it for you just look around we are here to serve you this is how he sounded in my dream and that is why i'm sounding like that they approached me so nicely the other two were going ahead ahead they were saying yes any, anything that you like just point it out we'll show it to you and so they were so attentive and they were so respectful to me that I actually felt good. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to look around this shop and I think I'm going to buy something in here. I said, thank you so much. Let me see what I can find that will suit me. And if I need help, I'll ask you. So they agreed. They said, yes, okay. And then um, the two that had stood up, the one behind the, the register and one of them on a stool, they both sat down and the third one was just standing. So this shop, it only had one door, the door that I had come in. And this door was a pull door. So most doors you open them and you have to pull them, but some doors they're push doors, but this door had a pull door. So you pull it towards you to come out. And I, <clears throat> so I enter the store and I'm looking around through the clothes, right? And there's something about the way that these guys look at each other versus how they spoke to me. Okay. I don't know what it was. Their tone was perfectly right. And they weren't pressing me to buy anything at all. They were attentive. If you need help, they had already offered their help, which is fine because none of us wants to be pressured as we're shopping. But a few times, if I'm holding something up and I suddenly make a turn, maybe to catch a better light, to see the color, how it looks to me, I'll see two of them looking at each other, or I will see all three of them sharing looks. And that look was hard to place, but after really thinking as I went over this prophecy and the memory of my dream, I'm going to call that look wisdom. These three guys were looking at each other with what we call wisdom. Wisdom is when you know something that another person doesn't know and another person also knows something that that third person doesn't know. And the two of you having the knowledge, you look at each other and the look that you share is a look of wisdom. Why? You are wiser than the person who doesn't know anything. So a few times, just unexpectedly, because I made a sudden turn or lifted my head when they didn't think I would, I saw this odd look on the face of these guys that I will just call wisdom. And at the same time, my mind would occasionally say to me, there is only one door to this shop, Celestial. One door. And then the thought would keep quiet and then I would keep browsing and the thought would move off my mind because I'm touching material and I'm holding outfits against myself and I'm carrying it to the mirror that is near the door to look at myself. They only have one mirror. So eventually I pull several things and I say, I would like to try these ones. Where can I go? And then they're telling me, oh yes, yes, it's fine. Just go behind there. Can you see it? There's a changing room back there. Just shut the door behind you so you can have privacy and then you can try out what looks good on you. And when you're ready, if you decide to buy a lot, we can even work out a price for you that will suit you. And then I said, okay, thank you. And then they say, you are welcome, ma. So I go around to the changing room and I get into the changing room. There's only one changing room. And I noticed that it's this small slip lock that we have in toilets. You know, the little lock that just slips through and then you bring the little knob down to so-called lock it. And there's a nice green armchair in there. And women, you know that... When you go shopping, sometimes you take a friend and when you go to change, your friend either sits outside the changing room, but sometimes if the changing room is big enough, like this one was, the nice green armchair was there. So you could either put clothes on it if you were alone or your friend could sit in it and watch you change and tell you, oh, that outfit is good or that outfit is not good. So as soon as I got into that changing room, I heard these guys starting to talk in their language. I could not understand their language because it was not the, not the English that they spoke when I came in, when they were saying, oh, good afternoon, ma, you are welcome. Come in, please. Do you see anything you like? Anything you like, just point it out. No, they were speaking another language that was deeper and it was either their pidgin language or it was something else. But all I can say is when their voices dropped, their voices dropped to this very low conspiratorial register. And all I can say is I, I thank God that I never touched a thing on my body to remove it 
so that I would have ended up in a vulnerable position in there because as I held the armful of clothes after having locked myself in and I was about to turn and drop the clothes on the green armchair to now disrobe because some of these things I picked were gowns. Some of the things were things that you need to put on and either zip up on the side or zip it up at the back. So that would have required me to remove some items of clothing. But as I'm holding the clothes and I'm literally bending to drop them on the green armchair, the Holy Spirit, my father and keeper, put a clear as daylight vision in front of me. It was literally like in Disney when the mirror that they're speaking to suddenly just shows an image right in front of me. I would say over the clothes, but in front of my eyes, a vision of these three guys appeared. None of these guys were big men. Okay. They were the kind of lanky guys. Not, you know, that Nigerians can be very hefty, very tall, very large. None of these guys were built like that. They were the more skinny type that look wiry, but they were not built or heavy. And this is what this man said in their own words, in their own language. And as I did in a previous prophecy, I'm going to render it exactly how they said it. So that they, th them who this prophecy is about, them who this prophecy is for can understand it. One person said the one who was behind the counter, gray t-shirt, and, um, he had his hair in a kind of crew cut low on the side and tall. The one who had greeted me and said, anything you need, he says, do you guys see what I see? Do you see what I see? And then he said, you guys see what I see. I see. And he was so excited that as he was speaking like that, he was hitting his hand into the other hands. Do you see what I see? And then the other ones were like, eh, eh, eh. and then they were like, this won't be fine, babe, fine, fine, babe. And the other one said, yes, no lie. Now be fine, babe. And I won't go try them. Now be fine body. She they get. I won't go try them. Then you guys can try too. And then they used a word in their slang that starts with, uh, why talking about my, my rear, they know that slang word. They use the word talking about her yansh and they were talking about my shape in such a derogatory manner. And then it changed and they began to go even deeper. They changed to their local language. It was no longer the pigeon, which I could at least pick up one or two things. The voices became so low, murmuring, whispering, but then somebody would laugh out loud and then they continued talking. I cannot remember or register everything that they say, that they said. All that I know is that those men were saying that I was fine and that they were not willing to leave, to let me leave the shop, especially the one standing behind the counter. They were not willing to let me leave the shop. That one said that I could not go until he had tried me to see if I was sweet. When I saw that vision, I had not even been in the changing room a full minute. And yet these people were discussing how to rape me. At this point, I'm going to say, if anyone has started typing on this video, put your fingers down until you have heard what God has to say. I don't want to hear any protest. I don't want to hear anything because I have constantly said in these visions, you don't know yourselves because we are human. We don't know ourselves. It is not in a man to know himself, but the spirit that dwells within that man reports him back to the Holy Spirit. God knows who we are. So just hold your opinions until you have heard the full of the matter. When I saw that vision frozen like that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me because those men were discussing about raping me as calmly as if they were saying, we have seen a car that we like to buy, but we need to test drive it first. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, there is only one door to this shop, Celestial. And I didn't hesitate. May God help me. Sometimes in dreams, I do something that I think, wow, this is, this is really reckless. But what the Lord is showing me is that inside my heart and spirit, there is an absolute and whole commitment to doing what needs to be done in the time that it needs to be done. 
I'm not that one that you will find being quiet at the time when people need to speak up. I'm not the one that you will find with a mouth open at the time that God would prefer the wise to be quiet. When God told me there is only one door to this shop after having seen the vision, it crystallized why he had been pointing it out. When you enter into a shop that the racks are neat on the left, but on the right, they're arranged in this weird pattern that creates a kind of maze whereby that now when you come out of that changing room, disconcerted, if men come upon you in there to grab you in there, to surprise you in there, to mess with that little flimsy lock. We all know the lock on the bathroom stalls are flimsy, but there's no need to put a complicated lock on a bathroom stall because we all know that each person is doing their private business and no one else will be trying to open another person's stall. But when you're in a store that is not that big with racks obstructing the way out and you don't have the Holy Spirit warning you and showing you visions, then what position are you in? I didn't hesitate. I burst out of that place. And the way I chose to go was to not follow what they pro they purposefully had put up to obstruct a woman for her to get tangled in the racks. What I did is I burst out and I moved behind all the racks along the wall. There was space along all the walls so that you wouldn't have to go rack by rack by rack in a zigzag pattern. No, I didn't run in a way that they would have expected me to run. I burst out of that changing room as the three of them were around the counter bent, bent over and talking and snickering and laughing, probably waiting for a moment to make their move. And so I got to slide mostly behind all the racks. And I thank God that this store was a door that pulled out when you entered in. The benefit of that is when you're going out, it pushes out. You could lose precious seconds having to stop and pull a door. It's very easy for somebody to grab you by your hair, grab you by the back of your clothing. But when you're in full tilt escape mode running and you have both arms pushed out and extended, extended, that glass door just went flying open with me behind it. And I was running, 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 barreling down the street. And I got away clean by God's grace and mercy. But, hmm. <laughs> To my shock, horror, surprise, and dismay, you would think that after, after being exposed like that or not knowing why the prey got away before they could test it, you would think that those people would stay in the shop, but they did not. Those three men came sprinting out of that shop. As I was running down the street, I was not quiet. I was screaming, screaming, screaming. They're trying to rape me. Rape, rape. As soon as I hit outside, I was screaming, rape, rape. They're trying to rape me, help me. They're trying to rape me. And those three men were coming after me so fast, closing the distance. And when I looked around to see if anyone was coming to help me from these men who were running to attack me, my shock was palpable because I'm thinking in public, in broad daylight, you're running me down. And the intent on these men's faces were like when people are hunting, when, the, when you go hunting for whatever, there's a look of intense concentration on the face of the hunter. And that's why I always tell people you cannot play with Satan because Satan is a tried and a tested hunter. He always gets his prey. Don't play with sin. Don't play with compromise. Don't play with lies. Don't play with false prophets. Don't play with pastors. Don't play with your body. Don't play with the grace of God. Don't play with God himself himself. Don't play. Christianity is not a playground because Satan is a trained hunter and he hates to lose. He hates to lose. So I praise God that I have an understanding that a thing isn't done until it's done. That's my belief. It's never done until it's done. It's not finished until it's finished. Imagine bursting outside and thinking, oh, that, that was close. And then they're after you in three seconds. No, I hit the street running and screaming about rape but I was so stunned to see these people giving chase behind me, these three Nigerian guys running after me. And the, the look on their faces was like this. If you think you scream, do you think it will stop us? You think you screaming is going to stop us? Do you think if people see it's going to stop us? And when I realized that look, looking back once and seeing how their faces were, I eventually realized I'm running for my life. 
and they were closing the space and what I did was there was another shop in front of me as I was running I saw another store off to the side and I simply burst through the door of that of that store I simply ran into the door of that store and I started screaming help me somebody help me please they want to rape me please help me and I was delirious with fear shaking shaking and so unstable but then after a while my voice just died down because what was I looking at I was looking at a room of about 25 men these men are the men in Nigeria who they tend to wear white gowns and they are usually very very dark skinned I think they are called Fulani Fulani dark skinned uh various ages from about 50 60 to 70 some of them clean shaven but some of them have these scraggly gray beards and they have uh, a skull cap on their head and they tend to they tend to wear clothes that just look muslim they just look muslim they probably are muslim but i realized wall to wall men facing me mostly elderly men all of them in traditional clothing each one is sitting behind these old fashioned sewing machines the kind that you have to operate with a foot pedal some of them licking thread and they're threading it some people have pins in their mouth and they're pinning patterns as they work some people are taking a water break some people are operating the pedal of their machine and running cloth under the needle when i came in screaming like that everybody stopped what they were doing and they looked at me with a look that i could not read right away and all i thought was i've killed myself now i've killed myself i ran away from three and now i'm going to be killed by 20. god help me now or let me die help me lord and then one of these men in about the third row because they were seated in rows of about four or five just going back in their little shop everybody sitting at their sewing machine in rows going back and then one about in the third row got up and started coming toward me and i just started screaming no 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 but i could not go outside because those three guys were standing outside they were lurking directly outside the door of the shop just like wolves that could not be driven away so there was no way i was going through the glass door of that tailor shop back to those guys because they were looking so enraged and frustrated staring through the glass of the tailor shop but as this man was coming i noticed that these guys are not bursting into the shop to come and get me so they're out there and then the man is coming towards me and as he's getting close to me i raise my hands and i say no no and this tall thin man just walks right back by me so nonchalant and he goes to the door of the shop and he locks it he locks it and then he stands in front of the glass door and he gives a long stare at those young men outside he gives them a good long stare and his face is exactly like the face of all the men in the store this this kind of blank but settled but firm look that is not easy to read he looked at them for a long time and then he turned around and he walked by me and he went back to his machine and he sat down and he started sewing <laughs> And then one by one, the men went back to what they had been doing, working the pedal, running material, having a water break, licking thread to put it through the needle of their machine, measuring patterns and pinning them with pins. All of these men were different shades of about 50 years old and up. Not a lot of them clean shaven, a lot of gray beards. Not a single one of these old men paid me any mind. I stood there at the front of their shop, literally having a delayed um, adrenaline breakdown, shaking, mentally destroyed, thinking about what almost happened to me, standing there feeling, feeling terrible and absolutely not at ease. Eventually, one of the men in the front row, he looked up and he silently pointed to a chair as if to say, sit. Don't have a nervous breakdown on your feet. Sit. I sat down and I was still shaking and I was thinking, God, no, Lord, what is this? Who wants to rape people in broad daylight? What is this God? What if I was not prophetic? 
What if I can't see visions, God? What if you didn't have mercy on me after telling me from the moment I walked in that the shop only had one door? What if, Lord, what if, what if my mind started to go in that cycle and I broke down into these big, deep sobs as if everything that a woman fears had already happened to me? I'm crying and then I look up and a man has poured me a soda. He's poured me, some, poured me something fizzy. He puts his, he gives it to me. He puts his hand on my shoulder for a little bit. And then he turns around and he went back to his machine. And there's silence in the shop for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. These men are simply doing what they need to do. And then the men at the, the man at the front who had pointed to the chair, he looked at me and he said, young lady, you must be more careful in this Nigeria. Things are not the same. A man can kill you in daylight now and people will not get involved in it or help you. You can die entering the wrong shop. You see what almost happened to you? Here, we make clothing. You see? Can you see? And he points to all the long, beautiful gowns for men. Only male clothing, male sandals being sold in that shop, the kind that are made of the very nice leather and they hold your big toe. There's male sandals. There's male tunics, there's male full body gowns, only male clothing adorning the wall and standing on the mannequins. He said, you see, only men's clothes we make in the shop. No women, just men. Then he said, we know those boys. They have made many women cry and yet they're still operating. Their shop is still open. Do not go into just any store. The lust of your eye can kill you. Stay right there and recover yourself. And they all went back to sewing silently. And I didn't cry anymore. And I was also silent because I didn't feel like I should disturb them. But inside, I was still dying. I was still questioning God, like, God, how can someone take from me or make plans to take from me something when I don't want to give it? And the Lord woke me up suddenly, suddenly. It was like I was yanked out of that dream. And I'm telling you, I sat bolt upright in that dream. You know how you sit upright and you're checking yourself, but at the same time you're looking around because a dream is so real. And I was surprised to find out that it was only a dream. And this is what the Heavenly Father, women in Africa, it doesn't matter if your earthly father is alive. It doesn't matter if your earthly father was good to you or not. You have a heavenly father, but the problem is that a lot of you have departed from him because you like the ways of the street. You like the ways of the world. You like the things that you see reflected on the TVs. You like what you see on the cell phone. You look at these pointless girls that aren't going anywhere in life. They collect expensive handbags and they build special rooms for the handbags and they arrange the handbags by color and they have YouTube channels with 2 million followers and something in you, something in you thinks that that's something to look up to. The world is so twisted now and it has taught nothing but corrupted values. And so women are looking at people who are able to acquire material goods and admiring them. They no longer look at their mothers who were able to keep a good home and give them support that they needed to complete their education. Tell them that you, my child, are going to be something. The women of the past are nothing to look to now. They're only to be pitied. You look at your grandmother and you say, oh, my grandfather was cheating and she still say stayed. She's sleepy. She's a useless woman but she knew the devastation that would come to her children if she were to throw them off the way modern women throw them off. A lot of you, you are very unjust to your mothers and your grandmothers. You disdain them and you despise them because they're older now and they don't look like Kim fake man Kardashian. You don't know the value of the sacrifices that they took so that you don't have to walk in their shoes. The silence that they bore 
whether you respect it or not, is so that you would not come from a broken home. When women come from a broken home, the potential to be raped by men later in the future is very much higher. Why? Because when you did not have a dad in there to recognize and learn what a male presence is like, when you step outside, the first fool that shows the skin of his teeth to you, you like him. And then he's taking from you something by force. He's abusing you. These modern men, they abuse in ingenious ways that the older men did not abuse. The older men were known from, for a slap, but these ones will gaslight you and empty your bank account and tell you that it's your fault, that you are broke. Whether you had a father in the home or not, God is here as a father. And one of the first things about fatherhood, in case you didn't have one and you don't know, is that when a father speaks, he is to be respected, honored, and listened to. When a father speaks, when the man of the house opens his mouth and gives instructions, he's supposed to be listened to. God is here as a father. And here's the most important thing out of everything I've said in this dream so far. What this Fulani man said. He didn't say to me, oh, poor girl, they almost hurt you. He said, you can't just go shopping anywhere. Where did he put the responsibility? On himself? On the men in the room? Where did he put the initial responsibility? On the guys who basically had a rape trap? sitting there and looking like an ordinary store. He put it on me, who touched that door and went in because of what I saw. And after he gave me all advice, he said, do not just go into any store. The lust of your eye can kill you. And we will look at the scripture for the lust of the eye later in this message. He said, sit there now and recover yourself. That's fatherly advice. Many of us, we want to be run, run to. We want people to run to us. We want to be immediately coddled. Even if we bring the story out and we're not telling all the facts, we're not telling all the details. We're not telling about the part that got us into the situation. We just want tears. We just want everything. And I'm not speaking of physical violation now because a lot of people have suffered that against their will because this world is desperately wicked and it is passing away with all its lusts. But I'm talking about the princess crowd, the princess mentality, the female pimps operating out there. Everything about you is for sale for a Birkin. The idea of a first date now is that he has to drop $700 on you at the Scallops restaurant. Third date, you want an Hermes purse. If he doesn't push up like that, he's not serious. You're becoming a prostitute, and then you're calling it getting the bag. And you don't have a sister, you don't have a mom, you don't have a friend, because they're all whorish the same way. Honey, get that bag, lock it down. Materialism is harmful. It kills the conscience. It eats up something important inside the female psyche. And a lot of women, Satan is your dad. Satan has raised you. You're in the house of Lucifer and he's given you all the so-called new rules. That's what you're playing by. And you don't know what a haggard existence is waiting for you later when you get older. God said to me, and I'm giving it to you exactly as he said it to me, so that you can know what things are coming for the future times in Nigeria and what times are, what times are coming in Africa. This thing, I have prophesied it long ago to America. I told America in 2021 that you and the husband that you're with, your husband is going to rape you. He's going to become a rapist in the house. He's going to start preventing you from leaving the house. He's going to start concocting stories as to why you're not at work. He's going to start damaging you sexually, being overly violent in so-called times of intimacy because demons are going to enter these men. If you are American and you are honest and you have been here for years, you know that I've said that. You know that I've told you what God said. 
that it will be as if a feral bobcat has entered these men to the point that they will be so lustful that they will be roaming around in groups looking for people to rape in broad daylight. They will be violating people in broad daylight and other people will be scared and they will not want to go to it, go near to get involved. Prophecies like that, the overabundance of sexual immorality, God says the end of it is that the fallen angels will be attracted to that sin. If you want to know why they're coming back, they're coming back for vengeance. But the thing that's going to open the gate, let me tell you right now, those of you who act like 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 6, and 7 are not in the Bible, those of you who act like you never heard that the morality and the sanctity of the body needs to be maintained because this is God's temple at all times, the scriptures are there and they are useless because they are not read. And if they are read, they are useless some more because they are not kept. These creatures are going to venture back into our world because sexual immor immorality is a powerful, powerful beacon that breaks the laws of God. You see, you can sin other sins. Even murder is a sin against someone else's body, but sexual immorality is a gate breaker sin. You sin against your own body. That's like pouring gasoline on yourself and lighting yourself on fire. That's what it's like. And eventually God says when that sin mounts and multiplies and becomes more and more brutal, more and more common, can be seen everywhere. They're raping babies now. Babies are not safe. Babies are not off limit. They're raping old people now. People who have long ago given up their menses, their past, their female time, their past menopause. They're being raped. There's an unnatural hunger that is inside men now. And that thing is coming directly from the biggest boiling vats in hell. Demons being released and entering into men. I've prophesied this to America and Africa. God is saying that it's coming to you. And the place that he showed me this kind of brutality is in the nation of Nigeria. Hear the words of the Lord. Rape gangs and rape mobs will spring up all over Nigeria and the rest of Africa. Groups of men taking sex by force, destroying people who fall to their hands by force. Both men and women, this will happen to, but more especially women. Minors and unaccompanied females of all ages will be the victims. But even women who have a companion with, will them, with them will also be attacked. If you are not careful and wise about your movements, you will be chased down even in public and raped. They will take your virginity right in public, right in the streets, in front of others. In the dust, you will be made a woman by force due to the lust and violence that will be in the people of Nigeria and other places in Africa. Cameroon is one, Kenya is one, South Africa is another. They will turn like that, but you will see it happening in other places too. The spirit of violence that will be in these men will be incapable of reason. You cannot talk to them. You cannot beg them. You cannot offer them anything not to violate you. They will be of another kind, wanting nothing but to tear flesh and bring misery to all who fall into their hands. Thus saith the Lord. All men who are opening themselves up to sinful practices like fornication and masturbation, it is them that the spirit will enter first. They will form rape gangs that will operate inside shops and small businesses. If you are so unlucky as to set foot in there with only your child or a younger brother as your companion, someone who can be easily overpowered, somebody who cannot fight and help you, that shop will close on you like the doors of a steel trap. And what will happen to you in there? You can die of it afterwards if you are not careful. They are violent and they will rape in such a way as to cause loss of life when they are finished with a victim. If your helper cannot overpower them, they will be forced to watch helplessly what will be done to you and they will carry that trauma around forever. 
You have to mind yourself and how you go out, even now before it becomes a normal thing. You have to dress for safety and utility rather than easy access the way females currently dress now. Men are going to change in a way that is devastating and frightening. Your own brother or husband is going to look at you like a piece of meat and do savage things to you in the wrong location, like your father's house or your marital bed that was intended as a place of safety. Women will be highly attacked and marginalized in this way all across Africa. And I say to you again, it will be common to see a woman sobbing by the way, wayside as the men on her finish with her. Even worse, members of the public will not approach her until afterward when the deed is done because some of the gangs will be armed and willing to engage in violence or even kill people who try to stop them. It is spiritual madness, demon possession, and only prayer and fasting is going to protect a woman along with the wisdom she employs from the moment she steps out of her house until the moment she gets home again. This type of lawless behavior will increase with the level of sin at play in Nigeria and other African countries until it gets dangerous whether you are inside or outside the house. Do not play with your safety, nor be rebellious to the words of my instructions. Hear the words of the Lord. And so you're hearing what God is saying that is coming to the nation of Nigeria. And to those who may say this can never happen, all I will say is you need to keep quiet because you have no ability to see the future. And many, many people who come here, no matter how much I have preached about the overpowering presence of spiritual realities that can easily manipulate people who don't have a strong Christian walk, a strong Christian faith, and also hold their bodies in sanctity and holiness. You are watching men go gay who nobody ever thought could go gay. And yet people, are keeps, people keep saying it can't happen. If the spirit of homosexuality can compel a straight man to step out of his designation and lie to himself that the reason he's stepping out of what he was created is because he has gender confusion. So you strip down in front of a mirror and you look at everything that God made. You look in a science book, you look in a medical textbook, both of them confirm that you are male, but then you say that you are confused. You're not confused. Your vessel has been taken over by a superior power that is creating for you a new reality that you are not strong enough to dispel overthrow and cast off homosexuality is a spirit just like alcoholism that's why people shouldn't point don't point fingers at any gay person when you know that you can't keep rum weed and crack out of your mouth it is spirits that compel the behavior the entry of spirits completely changes the representation of this house any house with open doors and windows especially sexually god is saying that these violent destructive spirits are going to get in until a man will begin to not see his sister. He will begin to see her backside. He will begin to see a sexual partner in the person that he's played with all his life. The one who's either looked up to him all his life or the one who's looked out for him all his life. If it's a small sister looking up, if it's a big sister looking out, he will, he will erase the boundaries of the law. All of Leviticus that says that the family member is off duty. He will erase all that and he will see a sexual partner. Sister will remove, mother will remove, and still he will see body parts. Instead, that's what he will see, body parts. And you think that spirits are not involved. Demons are behind every evil work. And God is speaking about the rise of an evil work that will get in. Why? Because Nigeria is sexually immoral. They're welcoming transgender among them and following them. Two, three, four million followers on Instagram, another three million on uh, Facebook or whatever. When the transgender goes to jail, they mock and they make memes. When the transgender comes out, they mock and they, and they laugh and they say, welcome back, mommy of Lagos. You're shameless in Nigeria. You have departed so far from what you were created to be. 
And then you constantly complain. Why is it always a, ne a negative prophecy about us? What do you expect with the taste of fornication and children born out of wedlock on your lips? Why are you having a rise in single motherhood? Why are you doing this? Are you America? Are you the UK? Why is this behavior normalized? Why are you picking up American terminology like don't shame, don't shame? It's a shame. You should be ashamed. The fact that we've lost shame here doesn't change the fact that shame is real, shame exists, and shame plays an important role in acting as a barrier against conduct that we should not cross into. That is why shame is there. We all feel it naturally. God programmed it into us for a cause. But now the devil is busy tearing down all precautions against it to normalize anything. Rape gangs, gangs that rove looking for sex, rape gangs. They already exist inside the boarding schools in Africa. You know that it's true. You would have to be mentally unstable to keep sending your son to a boarding school in certain nations. He will come back damaged, especially if you're sending him in the lower grades when he's young. Seventh grade, eighth grade. You don't send him when he's a big boy, when he can defend himself. You send him so those older boys can destroy him and send you back a pink flower when you sent in a blue one. You're not wise. Rape gangs and rape mobs springing up all over Nigeria, springing up all over Africa. Gangs walking around looking for sex. God says destroying people, male and female but especially focused on women. Why? Because we are weaker, because we can be easily trapped, because our minds are not exactly structured in a way that when somebody starts talking to us, we, we are analytical. Why are you talking to me? Is this a safe place that you're talking to me? Do I really need to be having a conversation with you when I know that I parked here earlier, but I was in the store so long that when I came out, the majority of cars that were parked around me are gone. Have you seen the pictures and the videos of men approaching women in the parking lots when they're by themselves in broad daylight? Have you seen the pictures of women having to film men and saying, uh, I want to call 911, but the fact is now I'm filming him because the filming is keeping him away from me, but I can't call 911 because it will cut the filming and then anything could happen to me. Have you seen the men who don't care about being filmed and still keep coming closer and the woman is struggling with one key to get in her car? Do you think that, listen, do you think that the sun is stopping sin? Let me ask you. If you're over the age of 10, is sunshine stopping sin? Because there used to be broad daylight that you can't sin. Commonly said in London, it's an old joke. You can't have sherry or wine before 12. So they wait for the stroke of 12, 12 or one, then they start pouring the sherry daytime drinking. The sun is looking down on more iniquity than it ever has. Iniquity is no longer waiting for nighttime because it takes too long. It takes too long to start watching porn. So you're now watching it at your job, forgetting that they have robots on the servers, watching everybody who's logging in, watching every website, and then they catch you going to heandshe.com. Next thing you know, you're fired. You need that job. This is a brutal economy. You're homeless because you're dumb. Dumb animals, the Bible talks about them unable to reason. He gave you a beautiful brain, a glorious thinking machine. You decide not to engage it. Where do you go? You follow Satan, Lucifer, the enticer, the tempter, the devil, the rise of the devil in Africa is the name of this prophecy. You follow your baser instinct until you sink down to the level of a dumb animal. And then you begin to prowl the street with fellow dumb animals looking for whom to devour. This is what God is saying. Unaccompanied females of all ages will be the victim. This is South Africa, left, right, and center. To leave your house and go to the bus stop and come back, you're bound to meet something that is going to change your reality forever. How can a nation be so proud when you're known as the rape capital of the world? Are you oblivious to what is happening? Did God need to send you someone to speak harsh words into your heart to show you how angry God is? With the status quo, did you really have to wait until someone came to rebuke you to really realize the state that the nation is in? Where women and girls are crying, crying. Female gender-based violence and femicide is the bread and butter of South Africa. If it was an economy that paid, that nation would be 10 times richer than it is. 
as it is, it's a black market economy. I also have that information in this dream. Hideous sets of dreams that God was giving me. How can any person hold their head up high when this kind of thing is going on? God is saying that they will rape people who are virgins. Your first time, he says, is going to happen in the dust. They will make you a woman by force in the dust due to the lust and violence that will be burning in the people of Nigeria, he says, and other places. Right in the street in front of others. Do you know where society has gone? Where strong men in a nation, strong men, aren't they always, they're always standing around selling oranges? They're always standing around selling things in wheelbarrows. They're standing around. They may not be wealthy, but they are strong. Can you imagine where the society has gone? That these men that have mothers, sisters, and daughters at home will see a woman in the dust screaming for her life under the weight of two guys or one guy and a third guy is waiting for his turn. The second guy is also waiting for his turn. And you're telling me that people in the public in Nigeria who gather for everything will see that occurring and not move and not intervene and not help. Can you hear, can you hear what God is telling you? The dissolution of the fabric that holds your societies together, where an act like this, an act like this has happened in France. It already happened in France. It already happened here in Philadelphia. They raped the woman on the stop on the train for more than 10 stops, 10 stops. The train stops and says, next stop, this and that. The doors open, people get out, people get in, it closes. The man is still raping her. Was he raping her in an empty car in Philly? No, people were in the car. They were filming it. They filmed it. Next stop, station B. You can connect to the bus and the train that goes here and there. People get off, other people get on. Some people were reported to have gotten on the train, seen what was happening and fled out to other cars. But the ones sitting inside lifted cell phones and allowed the man to rape the woman for 10 stops at the 11th stop, something like that. A police officer got on the train, looked at what was happening, put his hands on that man and ripped him off the woman. The woman had gone into catatonic state. Her entire mind, body, and physicality had departed. It was, just, it was just a carcass laying there. She didn't die. Her brain and all that make her her, how she laughs, how she has birthdays, her son, her father, her mother, her job, her friends, all of that departed. What made her her left? Catatonia from the shock that this was happening to her and from the shock that, knew that people here on the East Coast let it happen. It was the officer who got in maybe a husband, maybe a father, maybe somebody's boyfriend. He got in, training kicked in, and that is how that woman was not allowed, I guess, to be raped all the way to the final stop. Those people who filmed it, when God gets a hold of you, may your punishment fit that crime. When society gets to the place where heinousness is committed in front of us all, and nobody wants to get involved, when the men of a society do not think that the screams of a virgin require their intervention. That society is dead. That society belongs to Satan. That society should close its mouth when it sees prophets and messengers of God coming. It should shut up because it has nothing to say for itself. So God says, if you're going out and you don't have somebody who's strong enough to fight for you, then they will attack your companion so that they can get to you. If you are unaccompanied, they will attack. If you have a companion that they think they can take him, even if he's a big man, if there's five of them, they might be able to take him. Four of them to get, to get him, and once they get him on the ground, to, to step on his head, to put a rock, hit him with a rock on his head, then he's no longer a threat. So... God says that one of the countries they're going to be raping virgins is Cameroon and that South Africa is another one and that Kenya is another one. And he says the men are going to turn suddenly. Whenever you just see a new phenomenon like men in wigs popping up suddenly, always know that a master demon has arrived. A principality, a powerful demon that is able to exercise control over large regions. Like the one that Daniel 
almost lost his prayers to. The prince of Persia and the prince of Greece det detained me. It didn't say the prince of Athens, which is just one city in Greece. No, it said the prince that is over. It is sitting over Greece and is sitting over Persia, Iran, Iraq area back then. Powerful territorial spirits. When those things start moving, the entire atmosphere below, everyone who is not in Christ, everyone who is not covered with the Vaseline of holiness, which is 95% of the people walking around today, including fake Christians, including Christians. I'm struggling. Are you? Are you? Is it a real struggle or is it the reluctance to obey, to agree with the Bible and obey? Is it a struggle or it is the fact that you know what the Bible says or you've heard it, but now to do, it's not with you. Compliance, zero. Hearing, zero. Execution, zero. When principalities begin to move and press upon a population, everyone who's not slathered with the obedience of salvation, slathered with the Vaseline of obedience, wearing the Vaseline of agreement, wearing the Vaseline of submission to the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Vaseline, it provides a watertight barrier. That's why we put it on the little backsides of the babies to avoid the, to avoid the, di the diaper rash, don't we? They move upon the human body and people begin to do things that they would not do. People begin to eat cats. A lady ate a cat, no matter what the media is saying in its trolling. She did eat that cat. Many witnesses saw it and the police officer said that he had never seen anything like that before. Who prophesied to you and told you that the police are going to arrive and say that they've never seen that before? Principalities will move upon people. That person you're living with all your life, when they start acting strange and you sit there and act like a dolt, like you don't have eyes, like you can't see. Oh, oh, Franklin's been acting a little different. He growls when I talk to him. You're not looking for women's shelters. You're not, you're not putting in. I keep wondering why you women, you are living with fathers who are no good. You are living with brothers. You are living with men who are two steps away from putting you in the morgue. There's simple wisdom to go and get a key blocker. If you live in a house that has extra rooms, to go and get a key blocker and have at least two or three of those things. And one of them is in the room so that the day you need to run into that room, you shove that thing and it blocks the entry so that nobody can come in. The wisdom to maybe get one of these extra mobiles, one of these extra mobile offers that cost $5, $15 to have yourself a second phone, something, it's not there. Everybody's like, get ready with me, do a smoky eye with me, tra travel to Turks and Caicos with me. And the next thing, the next thing, I, Celestial, who's very patient, outside of this blog, you'll never catch me saying much. The next thing I see coming up on this thing called the FYP, the For You page, beautiful influencer murdered in the Bahamas, stunning influencer shot at point blank range by the man that she was married to. Women are dying like flies. But as this man said, the lust of your eye can kill you. And so I've named the country and God is saying that the spirit of violence will make the men incapable of reason. You'll be begging them. I'll give you the prophecy just now, the second dream that I have. You'll be begging them. You'll be asking them. And God says you can't reason with them. And that is because they'll be filled with demonic spirit. They'll be filled with an overpowering power. A lot of these men afterwards, they might become normal, but then the ones who become possessed, the ones who actually are harboring the spirit, once you harbor a spirit and the spirit has an appetite for something, you will continue repeating the sin. 
Your conscience will become seared. Don't even think that, oh no, the poor person is under the control of the demon. I preached everything about a demon in a human being controlling it. The prophecy is called the owner of the house. Who owns your house? If there's any room of your house where you're still committing sin, Satan is owning that room. If you don't storm that room, smash down the door, set the whole thing on fire until he gets out with prayers, begging God to deliver you, Satan will hold that place as a fortress. It is called a stronghold. The demon holding it is called the strong man. Jesus said that you need to bind the strong man before you can take his goods. Are you catching the pastors around here preaching about that? The strong man, the thing that keeps you in addiction? So, God says that they will be filled with another kind of demon that will make them hungry for flesh. This kind of rape that I'm talking about, it is the kind of rape where they literally do not mind if the last person who gets off of you is getting off a corpse. Something happened to a baby here. I've spoken about it. These parents whose brains, we will not discuss what was going on in their brains because of their loss, but they left their two-year-old in the care of a man, said they knew the man, the man was a friend. Why would you leave your two-year-old in the care of a man? Only God knows. That man raped that baby until he only stopped because he heard the parents arriving back from their date night, and then he fled and left the child there, and they came to find blood gurgling up out of the baby's mouth. He had completely destroyed ruined her inside and she died of her injuries that is what these men will do they will rape with a savagery and because they're raping in a group by the time the last person is done there will not be much usability of womb of uterus of internal organs of mind the mind can depart a woman who goes through something like that savagery is the mark of demons in the society and when a demon when demons are in the society freely roving around controlling the atoms to whom the headship is given that society is cooked on account of its own pride its own rebellion and its own sin because whenever these kinds of prophecies land on my desk god is already saying i gave them multiple times to repent and they would not I sent them many prophetic words to turn from the kind of sin that leads to compounded sin. This is compounded sin I'm talking about. I'm not talking about one incident. I said gangs. You question and ask your mind about the audacity needed to form a rape gang. So that means the, the police are on their way. You don't care. That means that anybody in the community could get a big fat stick and beat you on your back and break your backbone. But the demon inside you has you that you don't care. You're, you're willing to take all the risks and you think that that's a normal society I'm prophesying about. I'm prophesying about gangland. I'm prophesying about something that's like Chicago on its worst day when they have a hundred murders in 24 hours. And this is what is coming to the continent. And you think that God is just saying it's a mild kind of prophecy? It's just a, no. That means that he's been talking to you long before this kind of thing comes to me. So, God says it's men. The easiest access, those who are fornicating, looking at pornography, those who are masturbating, it's them that the spirit will easily, all the doors and windows of their psyche are open. And he says they're going to use small shops and businesses. So it's this place where you like to step in and say, oh, I see your shoes in the window. Oh, I see your bags in the window. Oh, I see that you guys are offering um, Malta drink. I'd like something cold. Then you step in and the next thing you know, that door closes and behind that door is a second guy. But when you were looking in, you just saw a little guy sitting at a raised register and you thought it was just him in that freezer in there. And it turns out his brother is in there too. And they do this for a living. They don't care if all the Maltas sit in the freezer forever. What they're looking for is flesh to destroy. God says, if you go in there by yourself, if you go in there with a child, if you go in there with only your younger brother, who's weaker, or you go in there with someone who is easily overpowered. He said that, sh that store, that shop is going to close on you like the doors of a steel trap. And what will follow next? He says, you can die of it afterwards if you're not careful because they're violent and the way that they're going to rape 
is to cause death of the victim when they are finished. And the helper that you will be with, your young son or whatever, he says that they will be forever traumatized when they see what will happen to you. And God is telling women to mind themselves and mind how they go out. So for the offer of food, can I take you to a nice hotel? Can I take you here? Can I take you there? For the offer of food, then you end up a statistic. For the offer of food, you come back raped. The habit of these men now is to watch you. And I will talk about that because that is what God said about South Africa, but this I know already. The habit of these men is to watch. They see you in the neighborhood, they like you, they talk to you, you're like, no, I'm sorry, I've got a boyfriend. And they think, okay, I'll teach you, I'll show you. They monitor you until an opportune time. And then several of them will catch you. The men of this generation, they must have gone to teacher's college because in their heart is the desire to teach women a lesson, except that the lessons that they want to teach come straight from Lucifer and hell. Women will be highly attacked and marginalized in this way. And God says it will be very common to see a woman just crying by the side of the road after the men who were on her have finished with her without the m members of the public coming to help until afterward when the deed is done because they don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be stabbed. They don't want to be hit with machetes because the gangs who do this will be armed, willing to engage in violence or even kill people who try to stop them. And God is saying that even inside the house, the changes that men are going to go through will make a brother or a husband a deadly person to be left in the house with. They will look at you like a piece of meat and do savage things to you in places that God calls the wrong location. Your father's house is the wrong location for you to be raped by your brother. Your father's house is a place of safety. Your father's house is the place you grew up. It's the place you know as home. It's your covering. It's the wrong location for you to go through that kind of devastation. Then on top of that, Africa being what it is, the family members surround you to now come and ask you to be quiet. Unless, of course, it's something that leads to a death or something that is so bad that the person must be given medical attention. And that's how the story will come out. Your marital bed, God says, that is supposed to be a place of safety. Your husband will be the wolf in that bed, bringing devastation and destruction. God says that women need to mind themselves and how they go out. You have to dress for safety rather than easy access. You that love straps, you that spend all your time on Instagram thinking of ways to wear less, God is talking to you. There's a, there's a mindset in women. The feminist mindset is, is melting the brains of women more and more. Every five minutes, they have a new trend. I'm not dressing for the male gaze. I'm not doing this or doing that. Feminism tells women that they can be different by means of protests or stepping away from so-called established female ideals. But what it really is, is is simply offering them an alternative way to destroy themselves. And they don't see that. What God made them to be and how he placed them they find that repressive and they find it odd. And so they think that they shall rebel successfully because Satan is inside feminism. Satan is the father of all rebellion. It doesn't matter if your two-year-old is telling you no and you're thinking it's a phase, but he's growing up into a four-year-old, a six-year-old, a 10-year-old who keeps saying no. There's a rebellious spirit inside your child. And if you don't prune and weed that thing, I mean kill it. Talking about, I don't want to break his spirit. If you don't break his spirit, you will be taking cakes to prison every six months to celebrate his new milestones on his 25 year spirit, because you lack wisdom. You lack wisdom. You lack the ability to actually see when ragweed is growing in your garden and rip it up. And feminism is just one like that. Satan keeps saying, you don't need to do and you don't need to be, and you don't need to take any time to read that boring old book to find out what is the construct of God in God's mind for you. What is the placement of God in God's mind for you? How do you link with God as a woman? No, I'm telling you, I've got something better here. Come and be a user. Come and be a female prostitute. Come and be a pimp. No Birkin, no date. No Hermes, no handbag, no phone number. What has you done for me lately? Come and be this. 
Those of you following that woman with the hooded eyes on the internet talk, calling herself Sprinkle Sprinkle, have you checked the woman's background to see that she's a whole witch and that she's not hiding it? Have you checked the woman's background to find out who she actually is? You take advice from the mouths of slimy people, then you become slimy, and then when you see somebody who's not slimy speaking under the anointing of God to you, you're offended. You're offended. I'm not offended at you. I can see what you are, and I want no part of it, but you're offended because you think me telling you the truth of what God means for us means that I'm better than you. I'm not better than you. I'm just more obedient than you. I'm bearing the kind of fruit that you've never seen in your life, and so it makes you angry because you think that I'm saying there's only one way. Yes, with Jesus, there's only one way. There's only one way for men. There's only one way for women. There's no changing that. There's glory, there's growth, there's anointing, there's covering, and there's power in being what God created you to be. Anything else is an aberration. It's slimy. And if you don't like hearing that, go and read Isaiah chapter 3, especially the final, the final verses. That's what's waiting for all of you who think that feminism is the road to go. That's where you're going to end up. He's going to eat, destroy, and completely rip away everything that you're putting in the YouTube videos now. And you're going to be standing there looking as wretched as Kermit the Frog when Miss Piggy finally got her groove back and left him. Yah is telling us as women to dress in a way that is becoming, to dress in a way that is righteous, to dress in a way that is fitting. The older you get, wear age-appropriate clothing. If your 20s are over and your 30s are over and your 40s are over, even your 50s are over, wear what flatters you, wear what makes you look regal, wear what makes you look good, wear what makes you look timeless, not what's trending. You don't need to be wearing these demonic leggings with the ruching at the back. This thing has been on my mind because of this prophecy. First of all, leggings are not the proper pants to be out in public with unless you're headed to the gym or back. This thing called yoga pants, gym pants, they're not for all day wear with a tiny tank top and crop top. And then the new style that has come from China, home of defilement, because they always pander to Western styles and Western needs. You in Africa, listen to me. If you're wearing clothing that needs to enter into your buttocks to accentuate them, you are a Jezebel demon whorish type of woman. And I'm telling you to your face. I hope you heard everything. Jezebel, demonic, whorish type of woman. An enticer, the woman from Proverbs 7 that I'm going to read to you. The kind that deliberately uses her body as a snare and you think God will let you get away with it. Every single person who causes the downfall of another by deliberately employing seduction. You cannot wear pants like that and act like you don't know what they look like when you step outside. You're doing it deliberately for, deliberately for attention. You're doing it deliberately because you don't have a single woman in your life who has been a role model to you or taught you better. You're doing it because you're cheap. You're doing it because you're lost. You're doing it because you don't want better. You're doing it because nobody has ever pushed or encouraged you to want better. You definitely know that you're not heading to the gym dressed like that. With material penetrating your backside so that everything is accentuated. And then you walk on the street and you're taking pictures because you actually want to capture all the stunned gazes of the people behind you, male and female. You want attention. I'm telling you, you will get all the attention that you want in Satan's brothel, the brothels that are coming from you, American women, the Russian brothels, the Chinese brothels. You want to catch fish, women? I've been here for five years telling you that you will catch all the fish you want. You will be servicing up to 30, 40 customers a day. You will not be able to run from the judgment of the Lord. Hear me in the power and the spirit of God. You live sexually immoral. You give your body up to someone who is not your mate. You are an adulterer. God told me to tell you, and I've been saying it since 2019, that the spirit of God will identify you in the day of the invasion. And you will go shackled to sleep with people in Beijing until you expire. That was the way he put it because I was still young in this thing. He used to say to me, Celestial, they will have sex commercial sex until they expire. 
God was even telling me before I started this prophecy, the difference between the willing prostitute, these young ones that, oh no, he looks wealthy. I think he's good for a bag. Oh, look at me. I'm on the boat. All that sex before marriage. How are you different from the girls who go to Dubai to sleep with dogs? You're no different. It's all transactional. Half of you don't even love these people. You're looking to build up your shoe, handbag, and dress collection. How is it different? Sexual immorality will be paid back into your bosom. Remember, the Bible says that it is a crime against your own soul. So when you're having it now, you're sleeping around now, you're a baby mama now, you're not married, you're on your third baby, you don't think that maybe the $150 at the, at the courthouse to legalize it, you don't think it's worth it. You're just going to be a baby factory for a man who's using you and saying, but I'm with you, ain't I? But I love you, ain't I? So all that you can find is the toilet man and the trash man to take you for granted, to use up your youth, to ladle you with babies and then still have the nerve to cheat on you or worse, show up after some years and tell you that he thinks he's gay. So he's got a dip. Every single action, listen to me. I was bad at physics, hated that subject. But that old man with the wispy gray hair, he said, Einstein, that every action has an equal and an opposite reaction. Sexual immorality, homosexuality, touching yourself, pornography. I'm telling you that Vladimir Putin is going to bring you a Christmas surprise that you have not experienced. And I'm not talking to Africa. I'm talking to you, United States of America. God says that you will be naked in front of who you don't want to be naked in front of because you hate clothing, appropriate clothing, right clothing, righteous clothing, covering yourself and walking in a way so as to bring admiration and not lust. Delilah. God says you will be naked in front of who you don't want to be naked in front of. In Africa, you will hear exactly how they will do it to you as well. Keep trying to be fine babes. So, it was very hard for me to sleep. Oh yes, God says that the lawless behavior will increase with the level of sin that is at work in Nigeria right now. The sin that is spreading in other African countries. And he says it will get so dangerous that whether you're inside the house or outside the house, this rape thing, this sudden attack can happen to you. So God says, don't pl play with your safety and don't, don't take chances. And especially he says, don't be rebellious to the words of my instructions. Hear the words of the Lord. You woman that wants to be fathered by the spirit of God. There's a change you have to go through. There's a lot you have to give up. You cannot have the world and have Christ. People think that I'm, I'm just saying stuff. When I tell you, I look at people and I can see you, even some of your, your, your avatar pictures on social media. When I look at pictures of people, I can see sometimes if there's a spirit on a person. And one of the most obvious spir spirits to look at on the young women in this country is lust. It's so evident. There's another woman imprinted on your face. You have a second personality and I can tell you who gets offended and who gets very loud when you get told it's that second personality. She's a whore. She's a harlot. Jezebel is a harlot. And when you tell her what she is, she gets enraged because she was constantly enraged in the Bible against the prophetic speech of Elijah. She's the same now. When you're sleeping around sexually active, do you really think that you're not picking up demons? Do you not know that you become a minefield of immorality? I would never want to be around women like that. You have to go through a process. When Queen Esther was brought into the palace, you think they just brought her because the Bible says she was a good girl, a righteous girl? obedient to her uncle Mordecai. What makes you think that even if she was all those things, yes, she was carrying virtue, but she was not yet ready to go and stand in front of that man called the king. And this is just an earthly king. They put that woman and all the others that they captured in the harem for a full year, a full year of cleansing, a full year of training how to be the kind of woman who is fit to sit on the throne and yet still 99.999% of them failed to have what was needed for that man to choose them. 
Esther had natural raw talent, natural raw presentation, natural raw beauty. And then God allowed it to come into an environment that trained it, that cleansed it. It says that she went through six months, um, six months of preparation with myrrh. Do you not know that myrrh is this? It represents cleansing, hallowing, a kind of burning and purging out. Some of you want so much, but your presentation, your speech, your behavior, your appearance is as of a woman of the night, someone standing on the side of the road, selling her most precious wares. Some of you have been bought simply because of handbags. You think you will get to heaven and God will say, oh, thou virtuous woman. He will tell you that your price was the $200,000, $500,000 Birkin. How cheap are you that someone bought you for half a million dollars when Jesus already paid for you with blood? You're lost. You are lost and you hate repentance. The spirit in you hates the sound of my voice. She's always attacking. How can I attack you? We're not even in the same realm, me and the women I'm talking to. We're not in the same realm. We're not in the same room. I'm in a place that's high and secured and clean. Holy, sanctified, set apart, submitted, covered. The real covered by God, not the fake one. There's a price to pay for holiness. It's an aura. It's something you carry. God imputes it to you. You can't take holiness to yourself. He said, be holy as I am holy. What do you think it means? It means imitate what I am. You think Jesus would ever be rolling around in beds? Or going with another man? You claim to follow a God that you can't do a single thing that he's doing? You can't try for it? You can't reach for it? You're not interested? All you want to talk about how he, he's still working on me. He, he, ain't, he ain't through with me yet. 15 years in church and he ain't through with you yet. You're a lost cause. You're a hopeless case. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in, like he's boiling on me right now, when the Holy Spirit comes in, the house has to change. The house has to get restructuring. Every weak wall will become reinforced. Every hole in the roof will get patched. The speech will change. You won't be asking me silly questions like if, if weed is a sin. What's wrong with you? Are you three years old? If Jesus was sitting here, you would ask him if weed is a sin. Is, drink, is drinking a sin? What do you think? What do you think it is? If this is a temple... And you put in substances that alter the temple, that alter the thinking capacity. You don't have full mental capacity. You're incapacitated. You're prone to do nonsense, say nonsense, get into fights, get stabbed, get into arguments with the police, get, sh get shot, die early. You're not asking these questions because you want to change. You're asking these questions because you're silly and you love sin. And you're always looking for a, a back road, a caveat, something. You're always, Christians look more for ways not to change instead of ways to imitate Christ in all things that they can be found pleasing on the last day. And that's a pity, that's a shame. Esther submitted to a lot of things that were foreign to her. Taken away from who she loves, who she knows, who she trusts, and thrust into a worldly system, yet managing to retain the light of virtue and holiness. Managing to stay clean until even the worldly steward fell in love with her and began to cheat for her and began to give her more than was her due. Began to lend her the help of his expertise had an eye out for her, watching her, gave her the right palace maids, prepared her. And you'd never hear in any of the verses her saying, I ain't doing all that. She humbled herself and was prepared. And at the right time, God exalted her. That is the payment of the righteous woman. It was hard for me to sleep after that first dream, how I narrowly escaped that store. But tiredness carried me and I had another dream. Little dreams mixed together based on what God had been telling me about all the things I just said to you. 
I saw a married woman, married, rings on her finger, a respectable woman, okay? A bit sizable, obviously wealthy because she was wearing such nice gold jewelry and the much more expensive type of Nigerian outfit. She was wearing a beautiful dark maroon russet colored outfit that had gold threading through it. And so as she got out of her car, for she had a driver and the driver parked her car and she got out of the car with a, about a son of about 14 years. This woman just looked regal. She looked good. And the reason she had told the driver to stop is because as they were driving on the road in a neighborhood, again, it was not a mall situation. She saw a shop with beautiful things. The first thing I would say is it looks like what they would sell in Harrods. Nigerians love to go to London and shop in Harrods. Gucci, Prada, things from Italy and so and so places. She saw that and she got out to go and investigate that shop. She wore a head tie, very well done makeup, a beautiful lady. And she went to look inside the shop. And when I tell you that the display of the shop was amazing, amazing display, the best brands were just hanging enticingly there in the window. They had shoes, they had bags. And a lot of the things that they had, had these very obvious gold buckles or gold trim, the kind of thing whereby when the sunlight hits the display of the window, you're definitely going to see it. That's what got that lady the dazzling, attractive display display. And honestly, I could see why that woman wanted to go in. The dream flipped and the next thing I saw were two guys that were tearing the front of the woman's clothing. One guy had her by both her arms and he was pulling his arm, her arms backward toward himself to stop her from moving. And another guy was pulling, pulling and tearing on her outfit, trying to tear the bodice of her clothing and they managed to rip it down until it fell in a flap. So her outfit had been sewn, I guess, in panels and the front panel tore and her bra was exposed so that she was not fully naked. And as I could hear the rough ripping sounds of this woman's clothing, she started screaming in an unfamiliar language to me, but I heard clearly in English what she was saying. And what she was saying was, I can be your mother. I can be your mom. I can born. I can born both of you. What kind of thing is this? What kind of wicked thing is this you are doing? And this woman was fighting like an ox with all her strength because her 14 year old son was quite spindly. And a third guy had knocked off the boy's glasses and crunched them and was now holding the guy in a bear hug, a boy. All he was doing was screaming out of that bear hug, mom, mom, while these two men were trying to overpower his mom. And she was fighting like a buffalo, her top ripped, her bra restraining her chest, screaming, in her language for God to help her and then switching to also cursing at these guys and questioning them as they were trying to wrestle her to the ground. And because the shop door was closed, the interior sealed, the AC on, the door locked, the respectful driver outside was sitting peacefully in the car with no clue of what was happening to his boss and her son inside. Eventually, one of the boys stomped the lady very savagely in her knee, kicked her very hard in her knee with so much force that she immediately went down on one knee. The pain from it made her lose her upright position, and that is how they got her. The next thing is the dream flipped again. God did not show me them doing anything to that lady, praise his name. Her head tie was ripped off. I could see braided hair underneath. Her top that had been torn down was still there. They had not removed her top and her bra was also still on because they were not interested in the top part of her. But the lady was keening. A keen to keen is a very high cry that people usually only make at a funeral. At a funeral, you know that the... The subject of the funeral is not returning. It's a done deal. It's over. And so the kind of crying is a cry of loss. It's a cry of extreme suffering. This woman was racking back and forth and there was no sign of these three guys anywhere. The son had run out when the guys released him after him being forced to see what happened to his mom. He ran out to the driver and the woman herself she was just sitting with her two legs spread like this and just rocking back and forth and just crying and crying. 
And it was like she could stay in that store until she died and then her spirit would revenge on those guys. She looked like she was not going anywhere. You know when it's just like, don't move me, don't touch me. She was like that. And her son outside was screaming and telling the driver. He was so hysterical. He was trying to tell the driver what happened. And I saw that the driver, when he understood, he put his hands on his head and he fled and started running, running towards the store. And that's how God stopped it like that. I, it paused on the driver running towards the store and God just stopped the dream and ended it like that. Hear the words of the Lord. They will make the display windows the most beautiful thing that women have ever seen. Every bag, shoe, dress, and trinket that a soul can desire will be in the window. But if you step in that shop, it is death. This is Nigeria. God is showing me this. Straight death for your body and your soul. And maybe even a permanent death from your injuries whereby you will not be able to recover. They are destroyers of virtue, wicked, demonic, possessed, and they will build shops that operate as bait and lures for women, L-U-R-E-S. It's what you put on the end of the fishing hook to get them to bite. Be healed, my daughters. Be healed of your lust for finery and pleasures. Be healed of the lust of the eyes or your body will pay a penalty you never wanted to pay. This is my will for you, to stay safe. Turn your foot from the enchanter and his wares, and do not go in to the adulterous man. Thus says the Lord. And so God is right here bringing forth, I prophesy to you, the rise of bait shops, lure shops, shops that will put every beautiful thing in the window, every beautiful thing on the display, in order to lure women in, in order to bait them, because women love bright and shiny things, women love beautiful things, and the wicked now understand that and will be using that. They will be setting up exclusive places, places that are even better than the first place I went into, which was just ordinary. This one had international fashions in it, but when even a mature grown woman who was given birth to children walk in, the owners or the keepers of that place overpowered her physically in broad daylight with no fear of the government or the police and raped a mother of children in front of one of her children. And so God is saying that when they're putting bait and lures in front of you, don't go there because he said, if you step into a shop like that, it is death. He said, it's an emotional death. Getting raped is devastating. Getting raped is the end of life for many women. They cannot come back from it. It is devastating. It alters the chemistry of your mind. It gets you constantly. You become locked in a loop of replaying what happened, running endless scenarios through your mind as if it was your fault. What could I have done better? If only I hadn't stopped there to use that Burger King. If only today I hadn't scheduled that drive when my car broke down. If I had kept up the car payments and the car checkups, my car wouldn't have broken down at the place where that man found me. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trap from Satan. It's a place to keep the mind. It's a powerful wound on the psyche. And demons usually love to gather around. The way flies gather around anywhere that has an open wound, demons love to cluster around soul wounds. And they will keep clenching that place so that a lot of people who have been violated, they have no peace. To this day, they have no peace. The therapy hasn't helped. Therapy will never help what only Jesus Christ can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. A therapist, I don't care how many awards they have, they can never heal a rape. God is the only place, person that is able to take broken, burnt human materials and replace them with new materials so that you can be whole again. He says, be healed, daughters of your lust. You have to love God more than the things of this world. People act as if loving God means you have to wear straw and have a camel's hair bonnet and walk around barefoot crying out, repent, please. This is, this is a modern world and we have things to do. But if it is possible for some of us to model Christ-like behavior in all that we are doing, for it to be evident 
than the rest who don't do it. You have no excuse. You absolutely have no excuse. God says to be healed of the lust for things because it's going to turn deadly. Wanting those trips to Dubai is going to turn deadly. Wanting those modeling contracts, those are not modeling contracts. I still have another dream to read for you. Those, those so-called modeling contracts, those so-called international deals, they're leading you into an, a non-stop, un, unpaid. This is something that he highlighted just before I started. There's the unpaid prostitute. That's you captured against your will. And then there's the paid prostitute. The one who walks the street and she makes money and also the ones who are very pretty on all the social apps. Don't think I'm talking about the yacht girls. I'm actually talking about you and your heart posture. That is not right. You that this video will come across your path and you will know. I'm not talking about the girls that actually have conversations with the shakes about fly me out. I'm willing to do this and this, but not that one. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you that are running a merry business with your entire self right here in the United States and in other nations of the world. God says my will for you is to stay safe. So keep your foot away from the enchanter and his wares. An enchanter is one who's casting a spell. Money casts a spell on women nowadays. Shoes cast a spell. A good looking person, a good looking man, sweet words, they cast a spell. People are not willing to take their so-called relationship to the Holy Spirit and submit it to prayer and fasting so that they can know if this is the right person. So... I'm going to read you from Proverbs chapter 7, and I'm just going to read you, um, I'm going to paraphrase it for, for the sake of the video, but you make sure that you go and read it back. I'm going to paraphrase it for understanding, and I'm going to read you a story of what God is saying here, but this one, it's a woman who entraps a man by using seduction, but God says that the enchanter and his wares are exactly like the adulterous woman, but he's calling him the adulterous man. And he's saying, don't go into the adulterous man. So then let's hear how the, the unwise young man, the foolish young man, let's hear how he went into the adulterous woman. Verse six, the one who wrote Proverbs seven is speaking of an experience that he witnessed for himself. From the window of my house, I looked through the lattice, the window, right? The window straps. And I saw among the simple, that means I saw among the fools, a young man who completely lacked understanding. And he was passing along the street near her corner in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and the dark night. So right now, we see all the places that lead people to trouble. So it's the black and the dark night that he's walking in. But then the, the Proverbs person, the psalmist is saying that he was one of the stupid. So you're not bright. And then you're walking around in situations that will not favor you from the beginning. Why? Because he says he was devoid of understanding. Devoid means utterly not having. Lacking does not even have two drops up. So he says, I saw among the simple, meaning I saw many fools, but then I perceived among them one who was more foolish than the rest. And he started walking near the, whore, the, the house, the corner of this woman's house. So then the place that everybody says, avoid the evil, don't go there. That's the place that the one who was not wise, the one who was not bright, decided to walk at night. Many people put themselves in situations that they don't need to put themse those, themselves in. Someone tells you to come over and Netflix and chill for what? You don't have a TV at your house? Then when you go, he steps beyond the boundaries. Your life is forever changed. I've said this. A bad decision is a bad decision, but a moment that changes your life forever. Though you cry, though you sob and regret, you can't go back. One bad decision can change your life forever. And there a woman met him wearing the clothes of a prostitute, a harlot, and having a very crafty heart. So she was very devious and deceptive. She was loud and rebellious and, and her feet would never stay at home. At times she could find her outside in the public square, lurking around at every corner. So this is a woman who deliberately sets traps. 
This is a woman who deliberately sets traps and moves around looking for where she can find prey. So she caught him and she kissed him and with an impudent face she said to him, I have peace offerings with me and today I have paid my vows and I came out to meet you diligently to seek your face and I found you. So this is a woman who presents that she's religious. Oh no, I, I, I've paid my offerings for the day and I've kept all my vows. I just came back from the temple from doing everything. I'm a church girl. And yet nothing about the presentation for the Bible is saying here she was a loud and rebellious woman, but yet she's successfully presenting herself as a, a humble woman, a submitted woman. And the only reason she's able to sell this lie is because she's talking to a fool. So an impudent face means that it's a shameless face. So she's a shameless woman. She comes up to this man and kisses him right away and then tells him that she's already settled all her matters with God. And now she tells him that I came out to meet you specifically and I was hunting diligently for your face and now I found you. She's lying. She's lying just like the men lie to women and say, oh no, I think I've I found you. I think that you're the one. There's romance and there's love. These things are real. And men will say this. I, I do think that you're the one for me. The, the problem is that you're picking up information, but because you are not submitted to God, you have nowhere to filter the information to find out if it's true. There's no Holy Spirit to, with you to just tell you like he tells me, Celestial, you know that person is lying, right? And I'm like, Roger that, God. Another liar in my face. You've got nowhere. You don't even have a friend. He's telling you all this, and then when the friend says, well, how do you know it's true? Then you're like defensive. You don't know him like I do, but you don't know him at all. What are you defensive for? What are you defensive about? What are you defending? You don't have necessary information. So why are you upset when wise counsel tells you you need a little more? You need to watch conduct. You need to watch behavior. You need to find at least one friend, especially an ex. You need to find something. You need backstory. Then you're mad. Devoid of understanding. The fool. The fool. The fool. So she lies to him and she tells him, oh, it's, I've been focused on you and I've been hunting you down. And that's how some of these gangs do. They identify their victims and then they will go after them. She said, now I spread my bed with a tapestry. I put fresh cloths on it. I've got covered linens all the way from Egypt. I've got the best sheets. This person is making sexual advances to a young man. And women of this time were never supposed to speak like this. So her character is quite evident. But him being a fool, he's still there listening. Because I started at verse 6, and now I'm at verse 18, and she's, he's still there. His own lust is now functioning. Now the bait is working on him, and he can't walk away. The ears have heard something, and the eyes have seen something, and now that the response is coming in, and he doesn't disengage. She says, I've perfumed my bed with myrrh and with aloes and cinnamons. Come and let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. There's a lot of people in this generation. You meet them and in the first 15 minutes, they're using sexual talk to you. Hopeless, useless somebodies taking up air upon this earth. Five minutes, they meet you. Excuse me, please. Commentary about your face. Commentary about your lips. Commentary about other areas of your body that are sexual. And then they think that's attractive. They think that that is that is somehow commending them to you. Just let you know that that's a brothel type of man, but they get a lot of play from women, but that's because there's a lot of brothel type of women walking around. And I'm talking about even high powered women, very ribald, no restraint whatsoever. Spirit of lust has so many candidates that I'm betting you he gets no sleep at all, just like myself. This woman, her tongue is out of control. But it's definitely, it's hooking a victim. She says, my husband is not home. Well, well. So there's fidelity in a vow that is being broken here because this woman just told this young man that her bed has already been set up with perfume, with cinnamon, with aloe. It's a fresh smelling perfumed bed. And she said, come and let us take our fill until morning. In other words, my husband isn't home. 
I've got the evening free. He has gone on a long journey and taken a bag of money with him and will come home on the appointed day. So now a hardworking man has gone and left his house. And Miss Harlot P. Prostitute is out in the street looking for someone to fill his space. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. With her flattering lips, she seduced him. Immediately, he went after her like an ox going to its slaughter or like a fool going to the correction of the stocks till an arrow struck his liver as a bird hastens into the trap. He did not know that it would cost his life. This is the husband coming home, not on the appointed day and shooting you in your throat. This is picking up some fatal STD from her and dying at a young age, an arrow striking the liver. It means the consequence of everything that this foolish young man did came back to him. You do know that the liver is one of the most functional organs in the body, right? It cleans up and processes everything. You want to die young, mess with it. You want to die young, ignore the health of it. Don't take care of it, abuse it. Put anything into your body and watch your tombstone say something like, gone too soon. So you've heard the story of how this woman enticed someone who didn't know any better and he didn't know any better, please. Victim mentality group. Don't do that. He didn't know any better, not because he was innocent and he didn't know any better, not because he was young. He didn't know any better because the Bible says that he lacked understanding. So the same Bible tells you, seek understanding, call wisdom, your nearest kin, meaning your closest family member, meaning devote yourself to what? To learning, to wisdom and to understanding. In order to do that, you cannot be a mocker. You cannot be a scoffer. Psalms 1 and 1. Those people have no room to absorb any new information. He was easily deceived because his head was empty. And his head wasn't empty by an accident. His head was empty because he was a fool. Fools never think that they need to put anything into, your, into their heads. That's the calling card of foolishness. And so God is saying here, don't allow yourself to be enticed by the things that you see. Don't allow yourself to be enticed by the things that you look at and that they attract you because you'll be entering a store that he says will cause even a permanent, permanent death from the kind of injuries that you will get. I slept again and I had another dream and the dream I saw was very short. I found myself with many, many women, many, many women in a house that was being kept almost completely in the dark, a horrible house. And in that house, they made us wear very little clothing all the time. We're very scantily clothed. I just remember female body parts, evident. Very little on us to act as modesty. And men came to that house to sleep with us night and day and night and day and night and day without stop. And there were so many black girls in that place, all Nigerian girls, every shade and color, but for some reason, it was mostly the heavily melanated girls. It was mostly dark-skinned girls, dark-skinned girls who favor their natural beauty, beautiful bodies, beautiful faces, beautiful cheeks, youthful women, all ages. I saw people as young as 10, 14. In that place, they didn't have a lot of light-skinned girls. They didn't have a lot of girls my shade or the people that use the skin lighteners to look international, as they call it. It was dark-skinned girls primarily of natural beauty in there, of all ages, and they kept watch on us night and day in that place. To those of you who have watched the sex industry flop house, you know exactly what I'm describing. I'm describing a by-force brothel. Their brothels, the women go in there, they know the madam, she knows them, they work and they get a cut of their work. They willingly do it. That's their job. They have pimps. The pimps are trying to maximize profits, whatever it is that they do. These women have jobs. These women have kids that are in high school. They have OnlyFans. They have so many methods of making money. What am I saying? They're involved in their prostitution. They're active participants. They understand what they're doing and they see it as a so-called legitimate means to make money. When your freedom is taken away because you're trapped, when your freedom is taken away because you've been duped, when your freedom is taken away because you, like the dummy that was walking in a certain area in the night, get snatched. 
it's a different ball game. Nothing you do is of participation. Nothing you do is of your will. And I want to let you know that it kills you. It kills you. It will kill you, especially if you are a person who ends up in a place like that by your own choice. You want the international modeling career so much that you didn't bother to do a single research about the so-called Nigerian agency that was recruiting you. Then you ended up in Dubai under those disgusting and misshapen fat men. Unable to reach your mother, they take your passport, they take your phone. What the men pay, they send a small amount back to mommy, and then she thinks my baby is doing well. Meanwhile, you're dying, you're dead, you're a scarecrow, you're a shadow. They were not starving us in that place. They were watching us closely, but they were giving us food. And you know that Nigerian food is very nourishing. Nigerian food is very heavy. And so you will not wither away <laughs> and lose weight. The girls that I saw in that place were very voluptuous. They had heavy chests and thighs. But my God, absolute hopelessness, broken spirits. It's what I saw in their faces. I've never seen people with the capacity to cry and lament in total silence because they would beat you for anything in that place. They would beat you if you make noise. They would say you are trying to make them discover us and give you a hot slap out of nowhere. And so these girls used to grieve very deeply for what, it, what, for what life had done to them. They used to grieve very deeply. A lot of them had done this to themselves, trying to pursue the dream overseas, this, that. What are you running to in these countries? What do you see here? Are your eyes open? Is your brain working? What are you looking at? Because I assure you, if TV has played any part in your decision, you're living and you're about to live a lie. So the girls used to lament and cry silently because you could catch a beating in that place for making too much noise, as they called it. We were never making noise. They were just beating us to keep intimidation factor and to keep us quiet. The only noise you could hear in that place is when a customer was making himself happy. That was the only noise that nobody would get beat for. Otherwise, we were told to shut up multiple times a day. And we were also threatened for any small thing that they thought we would do. We weren't doing anything, but they would threaten us just at the thought that we might do it. They used to tie the hands of all the girls together when we were not working. So if a girls, girls were not working, if they were not doing anything, then you would not be able to do anything. Your hands were tied. You could be in your room or you could be wherever you were, but your hands were always tied, heavily tied with a rope because they don't want you to try and touch a single door, a single window, a single door handle. Don't even think about it. It would never be tolerated to try and run away. Because they knew if anyone made it out and talked, gave the name or even the general location of the place, it was, going, it was going to be a government raid and probably some kind of immense prison sentence, a huge long one or even death sentence for them. And so they were always watching us like hawks, summoning us to some big room to count us several times a day. And that's how this dream started for me. I found out us myself crowded in the room with over 100 girls in a dark place. The hallways were dark. The rooms were dark. They only used to have these little small glow lights plugged at different intervals in the place. They were always calling us into this room to count us and how shocked I was to suddenly be in a dream where I found myself in the midst of people hopeless at their situation wearing next to nothing, standing in line with my hands tied to be counted among more than 100 girls in a place that seemed always dark. The reason for the darkness is because the men that used to come there, nobody wanted their identity to be seen in a whorehouse. You see, you don't know if the workers in the whorehouse will recognize you as the next governor running for office in a province in one of the many states of Nigeria. And so the place was kept very dark. And in that place, the clients favored walking around naked because they couldn't be seen. They favored walking around naked and they would simply open doors and look inside, looking for what they favored, looking for what a man likes, walking room to room, no camera, no snitches, no risk. No, death is in Nigeria. Death is there in Nigeria. 
And don't you dare deny it. You may not see it, but God is prophesying that it's not only there, but will grow until it comes outside. You see, you will only believe the words of my mouth when it comes outside. When you get the first outside case, then you're going to have the audacity and the temerity to act shocked. How did this happen? It happened because it's already taking place inside. When filth is bubbling up inside, it will reach the desired temperature and then there's nowhere else for it to go. Then it comes outside. The devil is living there while the people lie to themselves that they are always suffering unjust persecution and judgment, but they don't know why they say. Why is everything bad going to happen to Nigeria? Why can't you prophesy good to Nigeria? But look at yourself, Nigeria. When I woke up from this dream, I decided that I was finished sleeping for the day. Three in uh, one night, I wasn't going back for a fourth one, a following, a follow-up one. Hear what the Lord has to say. Yah says, or Yah said to me when I woke up and I was recording the dream, Kenya also has trafficking like this. Kenya is a country that has this kind of trafficking besides Nigeria. But he says that the girls for Kenya tend to end up trafficked internationally more than locally. They're the ones who go for work jobs and they end up doing hideous things in the Emirates and all over Europe without the knowledge of their family. South Africa also has an entrenched, that means an embedded, well-established human trafficking system. You need to go and watch the dream that I had about South Africa. It was talking about human trafficking, um, that more than 600 children or 600 children will be found at one time. A large group of children will be discovered um, involved in human trafficking. Something like that has already happened. They found about 400 children, something involving Zimbabwe and the border. But what I know is that God says that South, African is a hum South Africa is a human trafficking hub. It branches out, he says, all the way even into North Africa. That's how they traffic girls to Italy and the rest of um, Europe. They use Tunisia and Libya as um, transportation routes, promising jobs, promising modeling careers, um, and things like that. They buy plane tickets, and then you land, and they take your passport away, and then you're an undocumented immigrant in a, fo in a foreign place. You go somewhere like France, and you can't speak the language. You're hungry, you're homeless. You almost have no choice but to follow those men to wherever they, they're going, and when you get there... It's a nightmare to get out. European men coming in day after day, night after night, and you can't rest. Strangers that you don't know committing the sexual immorality against the body that God says it's a sin against your body. You do it to your own body. God says it's a sin. And now other people are piling on to do their, their part. South Africa has an entrenched human trafficking system, God is saying, and one of the most sophisticated rape mechanisms in the world. A mechanism is a method or actually it's a tool that has been set up to perform a function. Did you hear the word that God put in front of a tool that performs a function smoothly because it was created to do that? The word he put in front of mechanism was rape. So South Africa has a smoothly funct f um, functioning way or tool to facilitate rape. What is it? The victim will be watched in her area for weeks or even months to learn her schedule, to identify who she moves around with, to know her movements and where she prefers to be. That means if you like parties, they're following you to those parties. You're going to the parties with your friend and the rapist is appearing at the party as a random guy that just says, hey, how are you? Introduces himself to you as a new friend that you're making, but he's your future rapist. Something like that. The Lord said that girls get identified as a next victim, while there is no clue in their mind that somebody even from their own neighborhood, for it is usually somebody who knows them, 
somebody who likes them is watching them in preparation to do this heinous, hideous, and destroying crime to them. Saudi Arabia is a rape trafficking place for African girls, as well as London, Paris, and other famous spots where girls would like to go to pursue modeling careers and to make money. Ya says, <laughs> you put your hand in a trap when you got there. You take a risk. You put your hand in a trap when you go there. You take a risk. You can even be sold by a family member without your knowledge and find yourself drugged and carried to a whorehouse where someone will use you all your days as you are sold and resold and resold without end. Greed will be the destruction of many females, but the wickedness is in the hearts of men. So now Yah is talking about systematic watching of women identifying just as they did in the first dream. Have you seen this babe? Have you seen this fine babe? She's not getting out of this shop until I have tried her to see if she is sweet. So he's showing you cunning. Just as I spoke earlier, a hunter watching prey. Can the prey in these modern days then afford to be oblivious? Can you afford to be a woman whose mouth will say things like, he wouldn't do that? If the man that a woman bore can become possessed of a spirit and rape his own mother, what makes you an effort on what a guy that you don't know will do? You've dated him for three years, and so what? If he's not an overly righteous guy, a man that you can see is committed to holiness, the leadership that comes into men when they are submitted to God, becoming excellent leaders, excellent husbands, excellent fathers, excellent providers, excellent protectors, just excellent in all ways, and constantly striving, and you can see, though this man has his own struggles, I can literally see the Spirit of God working with this one I chose. But you're just going to look at a something, a thing thing. It looks good. It's tall. It takes as many Instagram selfies as you. That is the person you're going to say. He wouldn't do that. Next thing. Hi, you guys. I'm in the emergency room. And then there you are on, on TikTok using up my life. Because you have no wisdom. And because you always know more than God. And because you cannot be counseled, you cannot be warned, you cannot be told anything. Your mouth is open to refute, to reject, and to mock. You're offended. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. The man was obedient already, but he still went through that process of what it means to humble a human being by going through things until it produces the fruit of obedience. Somebody violates you, I guarantee you, evening time will never see you. I still have other prophecies like this. I cannot believe that these prophecies from 2020, I never did them. They're called Rivers in the Street Part 1, Rivers in the Street Part 2. You can go to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog and read them. I cannot believe that those heinous prophecies are still sitting on the blog, not yet made. I used to talk about them all the time when I was going through the sexual immorality series, but because they were so gross... I never actually made them, but I certainly will now. Rape mechanism, sophisticated, watching your prey. Okay, she rides my taxi every day. Okay, she goes to this school. Okay, I'm going to wait until I drop off all her friends and then I'm going to ask her if she wants ice cream. What do you, why, at 19, why do you want ice cream with a 35 year old taxi driver? Where are your brains? At 16, South Africa in those tiny skirts. What do you want with a 24-year-old man? Is this not harlotry? Is this not why you cry? Some of you, I'm not blaming anybody, but I'm speaking about the wisdom or lack of it. The uniform is smaller than a napkin. A napkin to clean your mouth at Burger King. The South African uniform, the skirt of it is smaller than a napkin. Then you're getting into the cars of these politicians. Oh, he's crazy for me. La ladies, do you think you will walk away whole? Going overseas for fake modeling contracts, 
God says they're busy identifying you as a victim and you don't know that you're going to be a victim. You don't know whether it's your neighbor, you don't know whether it's your friend, you don't know whether it's your teacher, you don't know whether it's your coworker that actually has this evil desire. It is terrifying to be in a world where God is not telling us about the coming excellence of men, but he's actually telling us that men will sit and plot. Who remembers that prophecy that I did? Realities, what is it called? It is called the realities of today, part one, something like that. The realities of today, part one. I think I had that prophecy in 2021. And one of the dreams in the prophecy was just black. It was just pitch black. And it turns out that we were in an internet chat group. I could hear the men's voices, but I couldn't see any faces on an internet chat group. And the men were discussing the best way to rape your wife and get away with it. The best way to rape women and get away with it. And one of them was saying, after you rape her, put her in the tub, make her sit in a hot bath for over an hour. The man who was saying it, then I saw a picture. His wife was sitting in the bath by force after he had violated her and he was standing in the bathroom over her timing her to sit in that hot water for an hour why because he was telling the men in the chat group that water dis destroys dna evidence force her to sit in the bath make her wash he said Four men in the chat, one man had no idea how to do rape successfully he was the youngest and so he was in the chat learning he, he was, you, you, I couldn't see anyone, but you could sense their presences. And his was the one that was quietly taking in the information and asking questions. And the others were pros. They were talking about different ways to, to rape women, different things to put in their drink, different ways to hide the evidence, different ways to get away scot-free. A few months after that, a big case broke in Singapore. The case was only settled at the beginning of this year in January. The men were convicted. A man invited more than seven men on different occasions, spanning almost a year, to come to his house where he had drugged his wife in Singapore. He would go onto a chat group and he would say that he wanted to see other men with his wife and then he will watch and tape it. And from that chat group, he found six other men to come to the house on various occasions after he put narcotics in his wife's food, put her to bed, and then let other men violate her. And then you will sit there, open your mouth and say, you know your boyfriend. All his tendencies are the brightest red flags ever, but you know your boyfriend. When a husband can do this. Just a few months after I gave the prophecy, that case broke out. And now again in 2024, right now, September, a French man is on trial for letting more than 70 men abuse his wife over the period of more than a decade. As a woman, how do you come back from that? Participating with the men sometimes or just watching and filming 70 different men from an online chat group brought into the marital bed to defile the female of the union. Lord, you know everything. So God is saying that those who like to pursue international modeling careers, you, you're always looking for an international um, um, thing to make money. God says you will put your hand in a trap. If you go there, you'll take a great risk. He said that people can even be sold by their own family member without them knowing it. They drug your food. You wake up and he says you will wake up and find yourself in a whorehouse and there they will sell you and sell you and sell you and sell you. That is unwilling prostitution. You're, you're stuck there. And he says that greed, following things, wanting things, desiring things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, the three greatest sins, every other sin falls under the grouping of those three. The lust of the eyes, oh, I want that man, oh, I think that man is good for me. You have no idea how many times he's been beating women in the past and his money makes the charge go away, but you think, oh no, he's the right one for me. Kenyan women, isn't this you? You've now crossed outside of wanting real men and you now want Bradley and Isaac, the creatures that have crawled out from the bush without ID cards, without any backstory, smiling and taking pictures with them with your arms wrapped around them, 
So you now want to sleep with creatures. You want to carry the trophy, Kenyan women, as the first visible ones to start mating with obvious giants. Oh no, they're the same height as the NBA. We have Shaq. Shaq is just 7'1". Bradley is 8 feet tall or more, and his skull is something that none of us have ever seen. You lack wisdom. You lack wisdom. You are foolish. I'm going to give you some examples. These examples, excuse me, please. These examples came on my heart. They were pressing on my heart, and I know that the Lord was bringing them up as real life examples of everything that I have said in this message. The first example is a young girl whose name is Uyinene. Uyinene. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And she passed away in 2019. This is a South African case. She was just a schoolgirl. She was going to a university. I think it was Eastern Cape or something like that. And I'm going to read it to you. Just a moment, please. So in August of 2019, this young girl had gone to the post office. She went to the post office and the post office attendant and her future killer, whose name is Luyanda Botha, Botha or Puerta, I'm not sure, told her that her package was not ready for collection, but that she should come back later in the afternoon. But the time he gave the girl to come back in the afternoon was after the post office hours. So the post office would close at 1, 8, 1 p.m., but he told her to come back much later than that. And so when the young woman came back um, later on, this man had arranged for his other co-worker, who was a woman, to leave earlier than planned. So normally the post office will close, but you're still doing admin in there. But he somehow contrived because these are the mechanisms of rape. This is how the rape machine works. This is how the rapists put things together. He arranged for his co-worker, whose name was Soraya Abdullah, to leave work earlier. And so when the young woman came in after the official closing time, exactly as this dream, this man locked the post office on that child and began to rape her. He raped her multiple times and he attempted to strangle her and he eventually killed her by hitting her with a very heavy weight on the head that knocked her unconscious. The next day he came back to the post office, got her body, took it to a field and set it on fire. This was a massive case in South Africa. It was so big that it actually made it here. That's one, of the, that's one of the ones that God has given me to remind you that stepping through the wrong doors when there's only one man in the place that you're stepping, maybe you don't need to do the errand that day. The bus comes and there's only one man on the bus, two or three men on the bus. Maybe that's not the bus you need to ride. You can't even think that it's safe if you get on and there's two men and a woman there because the woman could be part of the rape ring. They use women a lot now to lure women because we tend to trust when we see another woman there. That doesn't automatically mean that the other woman is for you. Wisdom is required to have a long life and to accomplish getting gray hairs in this world. The second example, speaking of buses, took place in India in 2012, a heinous case shattering case went straight to my soul a gang raped a young woman in delhi by the name of jyoti singh four men five men actually this woman got on a bus with these men and what happened to her should never happen to any human being she was raped the whole night the driver drove the bus around the city the whole night, not stopping at any of the stops it was supposed to stop at, not picking up any passengers. The men took turns raping this young woman the entire night. And then as it came toward morning, they pushed her out of the bus. I think she was a young medical student. They just basically rolled her damaged, dying body out of the bus. She was found, taken to the hospital, died a few days later. But she was brave enough to give her full testimony. She didn't hide and she didn't cover up. India is a cover-up situation. India has a lot in common with 
Africa. They have strong family ideals. And because of that, when rapes and other damaging things happen, it looks bad for the family. And so very often it's hushed up in the community. Not this young woman. She opened her mouth and she spoke loud. She said everything and the men were apprehended. But the strange thing is that as these men only lost their lives in 2020. They were hanged. They all died by execution in prison. But this woman died a few days later in 2012, and I have no understanding of what the Indian legal society did to keep those rapists for that long until they were only judged in 2020. India is a society that rapes children. India is a society that if your mother sends you to the well, you will come back raped in the village. It's a guarantee, and you know it. It's such a rape capital that when foreigners go there, they rape them. A Caucasian lady and her husband, I don't know where they're from, they traveled there recently as, as tourists traveling around. The people caught them and raped the man's wife multiple times for a very extended period of time right in front of him. He could do nothing because they were restraining him, exactly as Yah has shown me in the dream. Why do you think Yah shows me these dreams? Why do you think these prophetic dreams come? Do you think that he is bored and I also have nothing to do? Do you not know that the Lord, like powerful waves of water, is seeking vessels in the earth that he can flow into that will be brave enough to bring out what he says, regardless of how anybody feels about it? Hmm. This woman was, this woman's rape, this young student's rape, sparked off massive reform in India, but I'm here to tell you that that reform has not gone far at all. They're still extremely known for rape. The next example comes from Lusaka, Zambia. His name was Kalale. He was 33 years old, what we call a street adult. And I've spoken of this man before who was unfairly terminated because of sodomy. A street adult usually starts off as a street kid. It usually happens because you lose one or both parents and then you are surrounded by wicked relatives who don't want to take you and somehow... Africa doesn't really have an impressive foster care system. And so before you know it, the young one ends up on the street. You grow up on the street. You become a scavenger. You're just like a modern day Oliver Twist. You beg for money. You beg for food. You sleep wherever you can. And you just pray that winter will not destroy you. You have enough warm clothing and things like that. This, this young man grew up on the street. He became what is known as a barrel seller. You know, you just put whatever goods you can have in a barrel and you walk around, ask people, do you want body lotion? Do you want to buy soap? Do, do you want deodorant? That's how he made his living until uh, his own fellow street adults sodomized him in a very brutal attack until he died. And the police officer, who was a female, was saying that she's never seen anything like that before. She said that his rectal pa passage was basically torn they raped him so savagely that he, he bled out. He died. God did say that men and women equally would be attacked. Sodomite gangs will also arise. I've been telling you men for years. You're walking on the street. You've got your beats by Dre on your head. You think because you're 200 pounds, nobody can touch you. These men in the vans can touch you. Five of them can take you down. In fact, two of them, one of them carrying a syringe, is all that is needed to put you into one of those vans. And I told you that that van will drive you around the whole night. Men in vans aren't only interested in women and kids. They're interested in flesh. And you have flesh, males. Kalali lost his life in a heinous manner that must have been so terribly devastating for him, terrify him, terrifying for him. He didn't survive his attack. And that took place in 2022. I remember 2022 was the year I was going through some very difficult prophecies on sexuality. And I was in the sodomy series and someone actually mentioned to me, someone came to me either on Facebook or came to me in email and said, Celestial, we've just had a terrible case, terrible case. That is exactly what you're talking about, and I think you need to find it. And she, he or she described what it was, and I ran to Facebook, and there it is. Kalale Lusaka, Zambia. You just type that into Facebook, and the young man is there. And they're speaking very candidly about how he lost his life. The last case that made me completely just 
When I tell you that demons are here, this last case is the case of an 86 year old grandfather that was raped in the Eastern Cape. That's South Africa. So South Africa has two examples here. India has one, Zambia has one. 86 year old grandfather, his 23 year old grandson had been in the habit of attacking him, beating him up and stealing his social security check, his government assistant check, his pension. The young man had been in the habit of stealing his grandfather's check, using it up, stealing from his grandfather, that kind of thing. And uh, the grandfather eventually reported him and the police came and took him away and he was in prison for six months. When he came out of prison, he and a group of friends raped his grandfather, and he said he was doing it because he wanted his grandfather to have a taste of prison life. Clearly, such a thing had been done to him when he was in there, so he came and he paid it back on the 86-year-old man who, it is reported, fled the scene of the crime completely naked after what the boy had done to him, ran to the neighbors like that. And this case happened in December of 2023. I've given you the word of the Lord. You have heard everything, everything that came out by the impetus of the Spirit and everything that the Lord showed me through dreams, prophetic revelations, the understanding of it, the explanation of it, the scripture of it, everything. I've given it to you. Africa, Nigeria, South Africa, Cameroon, Kenya, and the rest of the continent, as well as all the other nations where women are seated. If your ears are open, and you have divine understanding, then it is not likely that this message will pass you by. The title of the prophecy is The Rise of the Devil in Africa, September the 17th, 2024. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. You know where to follow. Everything here is based on the Word of God, the Bible. Jesus Christ is the Lord of this work, and I am His servant. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.